Alrighty, welcome back. I'm your man, Bad Chad, and Queen Jolene's on the camera, and she will be on scene when the camera goes down. She's going to help me clean this bad boy. Um, I built this car many moons ago. Uh, I named it the Canning Kid. That's who I am. I'm from Canning. I've been here all my life. Um, I think it may be Canada's first bubble top car, and the reason I say that is because I blew the bubble I built the car. I've, I've never heard tell of any other bubble top car in Canada. Uh, this was like built many moons ago. I built it for a local car show. Um, it met, won some awards there. Uh, I showed it. I showed it quite a few times, I guess, five, six, seven, eight times. I've shown it. Uh, it's a car that um, that'll never leave me. I will look after it until the end of time. I do not own it, but I'm going to look after it. And what I mean I don't own it is because I'm not going to be here forever. And when I'm done with it, I hope Jolene looks after it. But it's a car that I built um, just to try to let people know that I could build a custom car and I can even blow a bubble top and put it on a car and take it to a car show. There's some funny stories about this car and I'll explain it maybe after me and Jolene gets cleaning it and, and um, taking the dirt off it and getting some, I put some spray nine on the chrome and some under crown on the chrome and just done a bunch of stuff to try to keep it the best it could be keep. Um, this car I paid $350 for it. It was a five window coupe. It had no doors, no floor, no trunk, and one side was missing. <laughs> I know it's, it's hard to believe, but yes, that's what it was. It was no doors, no trunk, no floor, and one side was missing. So in other words, no, one quarter panel was not there. Uh, the roof, I think, was an oil barrel. I paid $300 for it and laid it on the back of a half-ton truck and pulled it home. Um, the gentleman that sold it to me laughed at me and said, what are you going to do with that? I said, I'm, I'm going to build a car out of it someday. And um, this is the car that I built out of it. I'm not sure if the man knows um, that I've built a car out of it or not. I never really seen him again or met him again to let him know that I, what I've done with it. Um, where it had no doors on it is come to, you know, where it has no doors on it, that's why it still has no doors on it. I just closed them in and uh, it just made it easier for me at the time. Like I said, I built this car many moons ago. Um, I was not up on the custom world that much. I just, I just begun. I'm thinking this, this was probably my third custom car and uh, I was not going off anybody else. I, I was not doing anything. I wanted to do what I wanted to do to make my own custom car. Uh, and then this is it. Um, obviously, there, I was inspired by probably Ed Roth, um, Gene Winfield, um, George Barris. I was probably inspired by them guys. And I was thinking, uh, them guys are, you know, the beginning of custom car world. And uh, they all did bubble tops. So if you really want to be a custom car guy, you know, in, in a real custom car guy, you're basically should know a little bit about everything and the blowing the bubble top is something that I want to do. I'm not sure if I told you or not, but I'm thinking this might be the first bubble top car in Canada that was ever built. And the reason I'm saying that is because I blew the top myself. Uh, we'll go on to that after a bit. Uh, the doors were welded shut. Uh, the side that was missing, um, you could, this was round, not sure if it was round, I think it was just round pipe um, where the molding is and around the wheel well and around the bottom, that's just round pipe. I made a skeleton of the floor like we did Jolene's race car. Exact same thing. This car is channeled down over the frame. What I mean by channeled, you can see that the frame is here and the body's down over the frame. I wanted to get it to low as possible. Um, I didn't have or I wasn't, I wasn't up on all the suspension and how to lift things and how to raise things and all that stuff it wasn't up on it. You learn that stuff as you go and I'm still learning right to today what to do and what not to do to get where you're going. But this car was channeled down over the frame, did not have a frame for it. I had a couple rails, I'm not sure what they were out of, but it did not have a frame. So I made a skeleton for the floor, I square stocked it like I did every other, basically every other car I've done. And then I've made floor pans for it and shoved it up inside the car. Um, I think it's a 33 or a 34 just by the shape of the, the, the cow here. That shape there, that's what I'm saying, it's 33, 34. Uh, the frame is something that I had. Um, it's, I've boxed it in so it's nice and tight and right. 
And if you can tell, uh, and you should be able to tell because we've done it before, Jolene's frame. Um, this frame is nice and smooth and shiny. So I can, so you should be able to guess what I did to it. I sandblasted it. I filled it. I primed it and sanded it and painted it. And that's why it looks like that. Uh, the car has a Volvo front end on it. I had a friend, I still have that friend, his name is Chris Hines. Um, he came up with the idea of using the Volvo front end on it. I've never, he actually is a professional Volvo dealer or dealer, he looks after Volvos, that's what he does. But he knew that the, the Volvo had its own front cross member that is complete. And that's what we like about, um, that's what I like about the, the Volvo situation on this. Uh, I bring it to a new, just a new generation instead of a straight axle. This is a custom car, remind yourself. It's a custom car. Um, the Volvo had its, all, everything was self-contained. So the upper control, upper control arm was there. The bottom control arm was there. The spring was there. The whole cross member was there. All I had to do is mount it to the front of the chassis. And that's what I did. Uh, you can see, um, you, you can, I'm pretty sure, you can see how it's, Put on here you can see that's a gusset there you can see it's like a triangle will be there that'd be a gusset there's a gusset that would be down in here if you want to go to the other side there's a gusset right here that'd be a gusset there going in here to connect that front frame to the frame that we got going on um, i made my own motor mounts there's my own motor mounts it's pretty basic just a and, uh, and flat stock out with a 90 down with a bolt uh, and a mount going down through uh, it has obviously it has a a flathead eight that I require acquired from a truck that was 10 miles from here uh, it was a brand new engine that the man was going to rebuild his truck and uh, it did not get there so the engine had set for many years and I ended up buying the truck and taking the engine out of it and and selling the rest of the truck and, and trying to make the most of the situation like I always do and uh, I acquired the engine. Uh, it's a flathead V8. I'm thinking that it's the 100 horse just because it has the distributor up in the front here, uh, basically. Um, it has an automatic transmission. It has a C4 transmission in it. Uh, I went with an automatic, probably just to make it an easier driver, basically. Uh, the C4 transmission was hooked up with a Speedway, um, bow housing and that sort of stuff to get that to work. Uh, the rear end is a Jeep Cherokee. The reason I went with Jeep Cherokee, um, I'm thinking that is because the wheel pattern was the same as the Volvo in the front or pretty close. I'm not sure. Close does not matter in wheel patterns. They either fit or they don't, obviously. It's got a Jeep Cherokee rear end underneath of it. I made all the rear suspension in this car. Uh, I used trailer springs and I obviously got shocks on it. I put some chrome shocks in the back just like uh, in the front. It's got chrome shocks in the back. It looks really nice underneath. I can take a little bit of, maybe I'll just take a little bit of Windex and wipe that off just to show you, just to show you what, you know, I know it's, it's dirty right now obviously. Uh, and that's what the chassis looks like. It's nice and clean. It's obviously so dirty that uh, it's been setting for a long time. Um, this car has been used not very much. We used it in the show a little bit. Uh, we used it in the show a little bit, Bad Chad Customs. Uh, you can see we have some damage on the bottom of it there. Uh, at the show, I ran it off the trailer and, and uh, scuffed the bottom of it up. You know what, that, you know what that's like. <clears throat> but anyways, um, the car has a blower on the top of it. You see a blower here and a bunch of carburetors and it looks like it's got a blower on it. It looks like it's got a bunch of money in the motor. But actually I think the engine in, in all in all stands me probably $500. I think I paid $800 for the truck and I sold the truck, sold some pieces and traded. So I'm thinking the engine stands me $500. It was a brand new engine at the time or newer, it was rebuilt new, never run, just sat for a long time. But the, but the blower is something I bought up the mountain at the uh, depot center from Lori Layton. 
Uh, he had a bunch of trucks up there and he had a bunch of blower cases, so I bought that off of him. I've got a carburetor inside the blower. Uh, that's what I did. I didn't, don't, I didn't have the money or the know-how to make that blower work on that engine. So the blower's fake, the carburetor's inside, all the gas pedal and, and stuff like that runs through the back of the blower in there, so the carburetor's in there, so if anything ever happens, I have to sort of tear it apart. Haven't had to do that yet. The carburetors are just carburetors I collected and ran some copper pipe to them, put some scoops on it to make it look the look. That's basically all I needed. I wanted the look. I didn't care if it went 150 miles an hour, if it had the blower, I wanted the look. So when you're driving down the road, um, a lot of people do not know and think that this car has a bunch of horsepower, but it does not. It might have 100 horsepower, maybe. The alternator, alternator generator, it's an, it's an alternator, uh, but it looks like a generator, and I made it look like the generator is running the front pulley. Just something that I had to do to make it, it, it basically sits there anyways, but uh, we, that makes it look like it's running the generator, running the, the blower itself. And this, this here is a Speedway unit just for an oil filter. Uh, the exhaust on this car uh, is something that I just, I made, just a, three pieces of exhaust pipe, bent with a 90 in it, bring it home and, and try to make it all mod, mod, the same shape, I guess, and then come along with a zip cut and cut them all off. Um, it's hard, you know, some people don't realize it, but on your V8s, your exhaust pipes are only three on each side, and one in the middle is a little bigger, I think. It has a, I think, maybe, a Mustang radiator, and I like going to the Mustang radiator because the Mustang radiator is only 18 by 22, 18 wide by 22 high. Uh, we put an electric fan on it uh, to keep it nice and cool. Uh, me and, have we ever overheated this car? Yeah, I have. You have? Yep. Well, well done. <laughs> <laughs> Jolene overheated it once. Or maybe just the hose come off. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm, not I'm not sure. Or maybe the fan wasn't on or something because the key. Okay. I, I'm having a little bit of an issue on this car. I've got a little bit of an issue on this car. When I put the engine down, you can see the, the engine mount or the water pump engine mount. It's got a little bit of a slot in that. and It's kind of slid back on me a little bit. Now it's up against the firewall which is not the greatest, but that's what happens when you build custom cars. Uh, this car was built and then pulled right out of the garage and went to a car show. Uh, that's what happened with this car. And that's what it was for. I was trying to make a name for myself um, for building custom cars, you know. I'm here in Nova Scotia, and, and when you show up at a car show with a car like this, it's kind of out of the box and people want to look at it, even if they don't like it they will come and look at it because in all honesty um, it's something they've never seen before and uh, whether you like it or you don't like it you're going to talk about it. Do you see that ugly thing over there? Oh man I love that gold paint. You know, it's kind of that, that issue and that's what art does isn't it? Art brings people together and whether you like it or you don't like it that's what this car did. Uh, the bubble top is over here I just it's been in the house for it's been in the house for a long time. Uh, the car must be almost, got to be 10 years old. Yeah, the car's at least 10 years old or older. I'm not sure of the date, but this is the bubble top that I blew for it. Uh, this is, uh, yeah, this is the bubble top I blew for it. What happens is it's got, I use some van. There's a, the, hint, the shocks right here, some out of a van. There's a shock right there on the side of that. Uh, there's a, in the back of it, it's got a, little pin here that pins on the roof I'll show you exactly how it you want to come over here and just take a look at that show that it's got a pin here on the back of it and this 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 roof was blown out of a piece of quarter inch Lex or plexiglass not Lexan Lexan when you heat it up it bubbles plexiglass is the only one that doesn't bubble and, and heat up on or uh, bubble up on you and also there is a difference between cheap plexiglass and, and, and good Pepsi glass and you will find it when you blow your bubble but if you come back here you'll see that's where it was pinned in the back uh, it was kind of shaky in the back a little bit because it was only pinned in one place and you learn a bunch of stuff as you do this uh, it was pinned right here 
uh, it, here's another, and here's the, where is it? Here's the, the, the mount for the shock from the van right here. And when the top come down, the shock come down like this. Uh, I'll come over this side. When the top come down, uh, it latched in the front, and this is this is how it unlatched. I got a little spring there. I made a little latch over here. The top come down. It has a little piece of metal that hit that, and it slid underneath that and latched it so the top could, could not come up. When I want it to get out, I just reached my finger up there and went toot, and the thing popped up because it had the uh, van air sh uh, sh van shocks on it, so it just come up. When I put it back down, it looked like a bubble top. You didn't have to get into it, but all you do is pull the antenna. When you pull the antenna, uh, the shocks would do its work and the top would pop up. It was kind of kind of cool, but it was so hot if you wanted to drive it that it was not reasonable um, to drive it around. Uh, when I built the car, the car was for show purposes only, really. I had a 55 mercury at the time and i sold it to help me buy the stuff that i needed to build this and at the point in my life when I, I built this car i was building a car every year for myself besides doing customer work uh, so i could take it to a car show and say i could build a custom car that's how i how i got my work that's how i became who i am and it has paid off hard work has paid off uh, you're, you know who I am, I know who I am, and Jolene knows who I am. I'm bad Chad. Uh, the car was basically built for a, just for show. I have driven it on a road a few times. Um, I have papers to it. It's registered as a 34 Ford Roadster. Here in Nova Scotia, um, a lot of people ask, if you have papers to your car, you go register your car like just like anybody else. Here in Nova Scotia, it does not have to pass inspection. It has to pass, or it has to have a fit, physical fitness done by a mechanic. Um, when I build something like this, <clears throat> I would never have rusty brake lines on it. I would put new brakes on it. It has all brand new tires on it. It has basically um, everything new on the car. So when someone, you know, when I get a mechanic to look it over, um, they're okay with putting, saying it's fit for the road because it has everything new on it. I have new tires. I have new, new brake lines. Um, I'm not doing 150 miles an hour and doing donuts everywhere. Uh, this car is barely, barely on the road at all. So, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty safe to say that um, it's fit for the road. And let's face it, it's a 1934. 1934 only had one taillight. Uh, Roadsters never had windshield wipers. Uh, it's got a flathead V8 in it. Um, that's what a Roadster had. Like it's basically, and you could get an open-wheeled Roadster at the time. So it's basically, if you look at it or think about it, it's basically the same thing, but it looks way, way different. Uh, the paint job, it was my first, very first flake paint job, very first. Uh, when I did the flake paint job, I did not know anything about intercoat clears and all that stuff where the clear coat dries fast and you can keep laying it on, keep laying it on, keep laying it on. I took a long time painting this car and putting flake on it and just clear coat, all over clear coat because it just it, it took a long time because I, I did not want to get runs in it. Uh, the paint on this car is very thick. Uh, I think we can show you over in that corner where it's chipped off maybe, uh, where the bubble top has been hitting the edge of the car that's where the top would hit once in a while and it chipped it off you can see how thick that is um, that's when I asked Jolene whether she wanted her car flaked or not um, that's the reason why because when you when you flake something like this and you put flake on it it builds up very thick and the reason being is because you want to get the flake on the car and you have to in order to get the flake on the car it has to come through the gun with the clear coat on it um, when the clear coat gets on there and you think you've got it all covered and you clear coat it it's nowhere near ready uh, it's it feels like a sandbox it really does it's sharp and everything else um, so I've painted it and painted it and painted it, put all this um, flake on it and then I had to sand it all down to get it smooth or smoother so I could clear coat it again um, to make give it a nice finish so when you touch it it looks rough but it's not rough, it's smooth. 
Um, once I got it clear, sanded down enough times and cleared enough times, it was smooth to touch, um, which took a long time. Um, I was able to put the black and, and, and pinstripe the flames. When, when I'm thinking about flames and that sort of stuff and pinstripe, I'm thinking about Hot Wheels. Um, I had, there was a little black roadster uh, in the Hot Wheels collection. It had flames on it. I basically kind of looked, imitated that. All right, that's what I liked as a kid. Um, and when you, what you like as a kid, generally, when you get older, you're still the same person, generally. But you're allowed to change at any point in time. Remember that. The front end of this car is something that I made. Yeah, something I made. It obviously, there was no front end or nothing that it, I really had to go by. I just wanted to make something that was different. Uh, this was given to me at one of our Rockabilly car shows. It was a headlight bezel. I said, I like that, but I never really knew what I was going to use it for. I only had one. But when it come time to build this car, this is something that I went over to the little shop and said, I like that. Put it on there, made a couple headlight brackets, and, and put it in there. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking this is a bunch of round rod. And I do not remember a lot of the stuff that I did to this car. I have, do not remember a lot of stuff that I did, but I'm kind of thinking that it's round rod that went around there and round rod around here and then put metal on top of it, filled it, and that's, and that's what I got. All this stuff here uh, is not chromed. It was ceramic coated. There was a gentleman in close by or probably an hour away probably did a bunch of ceramic coating for me, ceramic coating, so that was all looked, that all looked really, really nice when it was first done. The carburetors were done, the little box I made on the top was done. This stuff, uh, when it got ceramic coated, it got so hot that it sort of melted some of the carburetors. You can tell they're kind of out of place a little bit, and a little weebly-wobbly, but that was okay. Um, I was going for the show, not for the go, on the carburetors. Um, all the steering, I made everything on the car, so I made the chassis, made the body, uh, got the, made the front end, um, put the rear end in it, put the front end in it, uh, right from the steering to the seat. So now we're into the interior. Uh, you can tell right here, this is a piece of square stock that goes all the way around. Another piece of square stock going all the way around the bubble top, but this is a piece of square stock going around here. I did not have no interior for the car. Well, I had nothing for the car. Actually, I was making it as I went. Uh, the steering wheel I got from Speedway. It's got an I did it steering column, so you can take the steering column off and get in it easier. Uh, the seats are a piece of square stock that I bent and made platforms for it. I wanted to make the seat like it was floating, and uh, it worked out okay. Floyd Hiltz, the man that's doing Jolene's car, uh, did all those for me. I think he did them for nothing, actually. Uh, God bless his soul. Um, the interior on this is just interior that you buy as diamond tuck interior and uh, that's just signboard on there I glued it on uh, me and uh, the guy used to work with me uh, we glued it on and put a little uh, piping around it so that's just a just as quick as as we could get it done um, interior that's nothing that I sewed up or anything it's but it's little panels that we made to stick in there this panel comes off the gas tank is in the back. The battery's in the back. Uh, the console is just a piece of round stock that was welded to the cowl of the car. So a piece of round stock that went down around there. A piece of round stock over there. And then I just laid metal on top of it uh, like, I, like, like I do everything else. Uh, the dash is a 62 Chrysler. I've seen it done on other cars, so that's why I kind of imitated that. It's got a bullet in the center because the steering wheel used to come out the center of this I guess it's called the bubblegum dash. That's what Gene Winfield told me, and I'm going to stick with it. Uh, I used a shifter out of a Dodge truck. The Dodge truck shifter used to be up on the dash. Um, that's what that was. It's got a 60s uh, Dodge Polara taillight in the back. It's got one taillight. Uh, it was the funkiest looking taillight that I found. That I kind of I just used it. Another thing, it was over in the shop, and I took what I needed. Uh, the window that's on it now, it's, it's seen better days, but Jolene, when I first met Jolene, she said, wow, I like that car, that's kind of cool. So what happened is Jolene um, was actually the first person that really drove this car and uh, put some miles on it. And uh, 
she thought it was going to be a lot faster than it was that's for sure <laughs> wow look at that big engine man don't go very fast <laughs> but it is what it is i put the so I, what it is i took the bubble top off it was starting to go bad i'll show you here in a bit took that off and i just took a piece of putz of gas and riveted across the front a piece of chrome edge molding put on the top and uh, it looked it looked pretty good so jolene started running this car and uh, every once in a while she'd take it to town and and do the deal have fun with it uh, she took me on a couple runs with it and we we had some fun with it uh, you can see how the wheel wells are made i made the wheel wells that's just a bead roller and then i bead rolled um, some wheel wells for it and i did the exact same thing as every other thing i made a pattern shoved it in there traced it cut it off and then welded it on the the round stock that goes in there uh, the trunk was a piece of metal that comes down over and you must and i'm going to tell you the truth this car was in not this car is not uh, was not is not in the greatest shape car no it's not um, this car was supposed to be junked many 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 years ago and um, what I did is I kept welding on it and kept welding on it and getting it in shape and then one day I started laying fill on it and I had to fill the whole car to make it what it is and I just want to let you know that you can take a piece of automotive history that is not much and make something like this and the reason is because I did it I took my my time I welded it all up I threw a bunch of mud on it uh, I got a chassis and I sandblasted it and welded it all up put some fill all over it put a nice front end on it I did the deal um, but in all honesty the car wasn't much let's, pay, let's face it I paid $350 for it and um, yeah I'm, I'm like i'm proud of it it's a it's an old car it's something i had to spend a lot of time and effort for to make it into this but it worked out in the end like it really did it made me made me happy uh, people got to see that you know i built a roadster out of well they didn't see what it looked like but it was actually nothing and um uh, the guy that came to work with me he said wow you're not going to fix up that piece of junk are you and i said yeah and you're going to help me <laughs> and, it, and that's the way it went um it's been in a couple magazines uh, like I said I think it's Canada's first bubble top car we'll go over here and look at the top for a second uh, the top is plexiglass and you can see how it cracked and took off on me it got a big crack up there I was some upset the day that I walked in and it was cracked it took three or four years before anything happened to it but it started really checking bad like that on the whole thing and what's going wrong there is it's so thin that that's what it did uh, next time instead of using a quarter inch i'm going to use a half inch thick plexiglass and do it like we did the race car uh, for bad Chad customs we did the race car on that we used half inch and that worked perfect like there was no there's there's going to be no problem with the roof on that car like this car but i really would like to blow another roof for this and when i do uh, you know that I will show you exactly how I did it because I want to blow another roof to put back on the car I want to take it back to its glory of being a bubble top car in the interior I don't know we we looked in there already it's a bit dirty obviously there's nothing been done to it for years but the, the carpet in the car was mats for I got them in, in the Walmart for the for the bathroom they're just bathroom mats that were white and furry uh, they did the deal what I had to do you know for the first time this car really you know it looked good when it f was first done it was clean everything was shiny everything was brand new um, the paint looked good the bubble top looked nice um, the wheels were shining all the all these stuff was shining the headers were looking nice and uh, it really did good but um, basically what we're going to do now is I'm going to invite Jolene in with me and um, my queen Jolene and we're just going to clean the car up a little bit um, I appreciate everybody coming back and watching and we're still going to be here for a little bit we're just going to clean the car as we go and I'll maybe tell you a story or two about it uh, it could be true or it could be false but it'll probably be the truth Joey's going to help me I'm just going to basically what we're going to do is we're going to use a little bit of um, I'm going to use a little uh, spray nine a little bit of Windex I like to use the spray nine on on the chrome areas first and the reason I like to use the because I've sprayed them all down with a crown or a 
or a WD-40, and I like to get that, uh, that film off the chrome. So, yeah, we're just going to run off some dirt, get it off. I'll probably have to go to Walmart and buy some new mats for the floor. All the seats have to be washed and clean. Like this car, when we went to the to the shop um, to start this car up, I put a battery tender on it, and boom, that thing took right off, didn't it, baby? Yeah, it did. It took right off. Jolene drove drove around the shop, man, and come right home. Mm -hmm. I I can't say that for the rest of them, <laughs> but I will say that for this one, this thing took right off, and this this hasn't been driven in four years. Hadn't been started in four years. Yeah, probably. Yeah, this thing hasn't been looked at in four years. It's been kept in a dirty old building with dirt and all that sort of stuff. But uh, anywhere you want to start, Joey, if you want to wipe down the body, okay. maybe I'll do the wheels and stuff. What did you think of the car when you first saw it, Jolene? I loved it. I thought it was, I don't know. I just like the paint job, I guess. Oh, it's got a girl's paint job on it. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Oh yeah, I had fun driving it. I think it overheated the day I took Janine for a drive in it. Okay. And we had to pull over or something. That would be Jolene's girlfriend. And Jolene's girlfriend lives in Australia now. Yeah. You might get to see her maybe? Yeah, I think she might make a flight to where we're going to be. Okay. Yeah. She's like in a different part of Australia. Okay. I'm not a big car detailer. But I, I don't mind cleaning a little bit of dirt off a seam where I haven't seen it. Well, I've seen it, but it's just I haven't have paid any attention to it for a long time. And uh, you know just as well as I know, if you do not pay attention to something for a while, whether it's a car or a dog or a child or whatever, it, it sometimes it gets out of hand. <laughs> huh? Does it not? Mm -hmm. Yeah. These trim rings are pretty cool on this car. Uh, they are a trim ring. It's got like a funny corrugate like it's corrugated kind of yeah these trim rings and that's just a white wall connected to the trim ring they're pretty cool i like washing the tire down with spray nine first and then going over it with an armor all or something i find that it cleans it and then put your your goulash on it to make it shiny and clean When I first built this car, uh, I did not drive it anywhere. So I just built it and I just got it done ready for the car show. And <laughs> when I let it down off the jack stands, I went to drive it out of the shop. And the shop is, like, we work in it every day where the Bugatti is. We work in it every day. I went to drive it out of the shop and uh, I went to turn out the, out the door and I damn near run into the side of the garage. <laughs> And uh, what I'm going to say is, this is the car that I learnt that the rack and pinion that you, the rack and pinion that you use to build your car, has to go on the exact same place as it was on the car that you took it off. And what I mean by that is, if a rack and pinion, so if you don't know, or if you do know, does not matter. It's my story, and I'm going to tell it. The rack and pinion on this car is behind the front of the behind the front cross member. If I took the rack and pinion and mounted it in front of the cross member, it would make the car steer, steer backwards. So, uh, not knowing, uh, a friend of me give give me a rack and said you can use that or take it and use it and put it on. So I did. Uh, not knowing, building the car. When I dropped it down off the jack stands to take it to the car show, the car steered backwards. So I almost hit the garage door, pulling it out the garage. <laughs> so, um, you know, we're talking probably a day before the car show was happening. Um, I, I, I still wanted to take it to the car show because I was proud of the car that I built. It just steered backwards, that's all. <laughs> So when I trailered the car to the car show and I took it off the trailer, I drove it into the car show with it steering backwards. I did not drive it on the road, <laughs> obviously. I did not drive it on the road, but I drove it into the car show amongst uh, probably thousands of people 
um, with it driving backwards. And uh, I was nervous as a grasshopper in a chicken house. <laughs> And um, I went very, very slow. I was just creeping along. But that's what you do at a car show anyways, is it not? You want them to look at your car, so you just creep it in anyways. But I creeped it all the way in. I did it two days. I drove her in there every day with it steering backwards. And I managed to come out of there with um, a top pick of the show. And uh, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. But it was a... It was something that happened. That's, this is the car that I learned that the rack and pinion um, has to be in the place where it come off the car. Also, I did not drive the car probably for a couple years after I built it because as you can see by the frame, I had the rack and pinion mount all painted exactly like the frame. It looked beautiful. When I met my beautiful Jolene, um, she liked this car, and so what did I do? I cut the mount off, and I replaced it. I, I took my time and made a new, new rack and pinion mount so we could drive the car, or she could drive the car. I took the top off, made the window for her, and um, she was driving the car. Off she was. So she actually is the only person that really drove this car because I did not drive it because of the steering issue. And after the show that I took it to, I was, I was tired. I was, I was done with it. And because I put all my effort into it uh, to get it done, and all my money that I had, or that I could muster, uh, to, to build this car. And, and what I, you know, end up buying was, you know, once you, if you think about it, new tires, a new battery, a new radiator, um, a new, a new uh, transmission um, set up from Speedway. Um, I got a bunch of stuff that was ceramic coated. Um, I bought the truck for the engine. Um, I bought the steering column and all the brackets that went with it. The spider hubcaps in the center. All the paint. Um, all the fill, all the primer, uh, the brakes. I had to put new brakes on it. Never had. I didn't use old brakes. Put all new brakes on it. I put all new springs on it. I put all new shocks on it. Uh, I put a new gas tank on it. And all that stuff that I was was buying was costing me money. And uh, I could not have the car that I wanted unless I spent that money to buy that certain them certain things like I I could do the body work and weld it up to make it look like I wanted to look but I could not put that shiny hubcap I could not make that shiny hubcap I did not make the tires I did not make the gas tank and all that stuff just just buying the chrome the generator I think was six or seven hundred dollars the generator that goes to the blower uh, we got it from Speedway. I think it was like, like that much, quite a bit. The Beehive air filter or the oil filter. Getting the header ceramic coated. All that stuff costed money. And uh, that's why I sold my car that I had. Because I could not get the car that I wanted without. So I ended up selling, or selling my 55 Merc to do this car and take it to the car show. So I sacrificed uh, my, my daily to make a show car. And uh, I had a show car that steered backwards. <laughs> and what a, it was really traumatic for me at first because I was expecting to go to a car show and be able to drive it. And uh, Was Gene at that car show? Gene was at the car show. I got Gene pictures with it. I never could, I never did get the Gene Winfield Award. Every car show I went to with Gene was always was trying to get the Gene Winfield Award. I did never manage to get it, but I have his friendship and that's all I need. <laughs> you know, that's all I need. Yeah. He's a man that I respect so much. And I think there's a lot of people in the world that respect him. And the reason being is because of the human being he is. 
and he is very talented also. So this is a custom car that will will be in um, our collection probably for the rest of my life. And I'm not sure what Jolene, I have no idea. We'll just leave it as that. It'll be what it be. And I know, you know, I might have, I might have built this car, but in, in actual fact, I'm just looking it after for the next person. And that's Jolene, my little car queen, Jolene. From being a young lady, going playing to being a soccer lady and being sports minded, um, you sure have come over to the the car world to the car community. You know, yeah, I have. You have. I've been in training for the last six years. She's been in training, boys. You hear that? In training. Badchat boot camp. Badchat boot camp. I'm just going to see what I can get done with. I'm not sure if I can get these headers cleaned off. I'm not sure what I would use to clean a ceramic. They are burning through a little bit. And what it means by burning through is the ceramic is getting a little bit rusty. I'm not sure if I could take an SOS pad and clean them off. Just like just the oil on the steering here. I take this steering shaft there, clean that off. That thing's gonna sparkle like a diamond. <laughs> In building something like this, there's lots of mistakes to be had, that's for sure. See that? I'm gonna take a look at that. Gonna see how I did that. Well, it just goes through there. Okay. What I did on this one, it does not have. It does not have a ball mount coming through the the firewall. So what I did is I got a piece of I see it coming through there. I got a piece of exhaust pipe uh, about probably six inches long that the steering column runs through so it can't move. It's in there, but it can't move out of that, but it's not as good as the ball. You know what I'm trying to say. I like the ball, I would have mounted, well, I don't know if the ball would have worked there like I would want it to, but. Well, I know why they use stainless steel a lot because it stays nice. <laughs> And this chassis is at least 10 years old. Um, like I said before, I filled it, primed it, and painted it. And I do, see, do not see any cracks, chips, nothing in it. Looks good. Looks good. And the paint, that's another thing. <laughs> I think the paint looks good. The paint looks good. It's got a few chips on the other spot over there yeah. where you're at there. What I'm going to do uh, with the cars that are like this, I'll get most of the grease and the, and the stuff off and the dirt. And then I'm probably going to get someone to really detail them. Uh, some people are really good at that and enjoy it. And the person that is really good at it and enjoys it should be the person that does it. <laughs> It's hard to watch something go down when it was so so nice. <laughs> like there was no rust on it whatsoever. And then now there's like little, in between the metals there's some rust going like on the where the lower control arms were ceramic coated, okay. a little bit of rust going on in between there. Mm -hmm. um, a little bit of dirt, grease. Ugh. But that's how that's how it rolls. Also, when you run a car on the road. You must, must know that the shine is coming off unless you're willing to put it in your shop and clean it and clean it and clean it. And that's not me. No. That's not me. 
you wipe you wipe this side down, didn't you? It looks good. Yeah, it did. Looks good. And I will take and I will take and fix the bottom of that. That's no big deal. I can tape it off where the red pin stripe is, and uh, fix that black. And going along there, I can. I'll fix that. Do you think, yeah, probably. What's that, sweetheart? Spray nine would probably. You can do, like, you can do whatever you want. Just hit it with anything you want. I don't think it matters a whole lot. Just anything would clean it and make it look a little better. The engine has stayed nice for the paint that I put on it for the time it's been done. It looks nice. Mm -hmm. It's not all chipped off. It's it's not clean, but it's it's still all there. Man, she was sparkling the first day I had her done, man. Everything was brand new. Bubble top was all clean on her. Man, I was kicking ass and taking numbers. <laughs> and, um, I hope, what a hope. I would like to know if this is Canada's first bubble top car, Canada, the small village, and I feel um, if the person, if, if there is another one, I'm not sure, maybe, maybe there is, if there is, if they blew their bubble or not, if they use something, a lot of people um, say they built a bubble top car but never blew the bubble, that's not exactly what I'm calling building a bubble top car. Um, you must blow the top to consider building a bubble cup to help care. You must, build, you must blow the top. Or I think you should. But then again, who am I? This thing needs a toothbrush is what it needs. You know what I'm trying to tell you? Mm -hmm. Like everywheres. And if it's not the first Candace first bubble, bubble bubble top care, it does not matter. But if it is, I'll take it. How long are we, baby? We're at 47. 47? Yeah. Oh, got lots of time to clean her yet. This care is called the Canning Kid. Um, when, when me and Jolene went to, uh, when we went to the Discovery Building uh, to see about doing a show called Bad Chad Customs, I'm not sure what that was, but I'm not sure. What? I don't know. Uh, when we did the show, this is the car that they got to see, and um, I think they thought it was pretty cool. A brand new starter on it. That little piece there, I don't know how much that costs, but it all it's all money to buy that, to buy that, to buy a brand new starter, to buy all your cables for your starter, uh, buy the generator, get the stuff all ceramic coated, Mustang radiator, uh, the stainless on here, all new belts, new water pumps for the engine, because we all, or not all know, but uh, the old water pumps on a flathead, you want to make sure you got the good ones. Oh, you got the seats cleaned up. That's come loose, I see. Ooh. I must have to go in through the back side to tighten that up. That's, that's how it goes. That's what happens. The wheel trim rings are pretty cool. See how these are, what I'm talking about, how they were corrugated and they got a little white um, trim ring on the outside. It's pretty cool, I thought. Mm -hmm. I actually wish now that I see the tires that I have or a white wall on the inside, like a, an inch white wall on the inside. I sort of would like that inch white wall here. We're gonna give it that double white walled look, which I never thought of at the time, but would be cool. It would be cool. Uh, I had to fix, yeah. Stuff like this, 
Um, there's probably something inside there that has come loose that holds that bullet in there. Obviously, there's a bolt that goes up and through there and bolts in there, and there must be a bracket in the back or something um, to hold that there. There's something in there. The interior is absolutely filthy. The interior would come very clean. It just would take some time to clean it, that's all. Uh, the carpet, I'll probably end up having to take the seats out of it and, and redoing the carpet on it. That just needs to be cleaned. That's a aluminum that would have to be cleaned. Maybe I can get someone to polish that. I, got, I don't know how you get in there. Uh, that's for the professional cleaner. That's who that's for. All the copper tubing, that's loose. All the copper tubing on this is just fake um, to make it look the part. I have to take that, you know, to really, in all honesty, uh, to detail that. And if you come around here, if you want to take a look at this, just the brake lines and stuff like that, like the flex lines and the brake lines and, and the shocks, and just, it, it, it really does, it, it adds up. Um, it's all new flex lines, and like when you talk about getting them ready for the road, it's all new brake lines, there's no rust on them, they're all brand new, or they were. All the calipers and all the brake pads are new. All the, the fittings are new. Oh, everything was painted nice and right. It was. New tie rod ends. You know, there's nothing that's old about it. Like you can tell because the rubbers are not cracked. They're brand new. It's brand new. All the rubber hoses in it. The electric fan. You have to go over this with a fine tooth comb. Not sure where all the dirt come from, but there she is in all her glory. We took a little bit of dirt off it. Just buying the acorn nuts for the flathead, um, I think they're a fair, a fair bit of money, to be honest with you. All right, everybody, thanks for coming back. We appreciate it. Um, we're just gonna play away here and keep, just take some grime off it. Uh, this is a car called the Canning Kid. I'm very proud of it. Um, if you're anybody that's interested in custom cars or a show car or anything like that, you can do it just as well as I can. All it's called is the will and the one because this car was not much, but I used every resource I could to, to get it done and uh, it paid off and I'll tell you why because this is where I'm at now. Um, there's the bubble top, which I'm saying is Canada's first bubble top car. I know that bubble top cars have been around for quite a long time, but I'm thinking it's Canada's first. Uh, and that's where I come into buying stuff and trying to, that's why I use what I have. I had to use what I had uh, to build this car. Like the chassis, I didn't spend a bunch of money on, I made it. The front end of the Volvo was a friend that help me out um, but there's pieces on it that I had to buy and I did what I had to do to get it done and uh, what I'm going to do is someday is I'm going to blow a new top for it and I'll take you along for the ride with me when we blow the tops so you know how to do it because everybody should know how to do it if they want to uh, it's out there if you want to know how to do it uh, all right everybody thanks for everybody for coming back and, and listen to it the canning kid Probably my third custom car, and I hope you enjoyed it. And if you don't, it's a piece of art. See you later.